Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, and welcome back to another episode of Excess Gaming Podcast, and this is the first podcast of the year 2020. No flying cars, but another great podcast. I'm your host, Xander Scully, and join with me as always is Mr. James Grusom. What's up, James? Greetings and salutations, everyone. As you said, it is 2020. It really seems like that would be like a huge landmark uh, year. It really was nothing like when we hit, you know, 2000. Yeah. A lot of us remember that, you know, with the dangerous computers and everything crashing. Uh, you, you don't really have the worry uh, and such with this. It really is just kind of, uh, you know, another year. But there's always good things to look forward to. I hope everyone had a great Christmas. Um, I'm kind of glad it's over with. Yeah. The other day I uh, went downstairs and my wife had fallen asleep. Well, Hulu was on. She was watching Saturday Night Live, and there was a Christmas episode playing. It's like I just about wanted to puke when I came down, and like Miley Cyrus was singing uh, uh, "So This Is Christmas" uh, by John Lennon. And I was just like, "Oh my god, I want to hear this! <laughs> I know about Christmas." Like I, I tried, I, I embraced it while I could. I did not get to watch near as many Christmas specials as I really uh, wanted or meant to. I didn't watch Home Alone. I didn't watch Rudolph. I even bought a couple sets of you know, all the frosty and everything. And like, man, I didn't, I didn't watch any of that stuff, but I, I got it for next year when I try to have to, you know, force myself to, <laughs> to get through it. But all in all, it, it wasn't bad. My wife went out of town uh, for the weekend with her mom. So I was chilling with the cats and uh, I just hung out. Like I watched some wrestling. I had a very just chill day and the cats did get their stocking. I always get a stocking for my cats. And uh, yeah, we and did that, that too. Dude, Christmas. It just really just kind of came and went. Isn't it did. It so weird. It really did. It was like it, just it was. Vanishes. Yeah, it was like that anticipation. I remember our last episode. It was uh, in December. We had Ryan on, and we were all talking about Christmas. And it was just like out of nowhere. It was there and it was gone. And yeah, we had we had some stockings for our cats. You know, some you know uh, catnip and little toys and stuff like that. And we didn't we didn't really watch a whole lot of Christmas stuff ourselves, but we did watch this one movie. That we could not finish. It was so bad. Uh, I want to mention on the podcast, it was this show called uh, Santa Claus. And that sounds like a horror movie, like Santa Claus. Like it's some, you know, monster Santa is killing kids or something. But no, it was like, it was about cats. <laughs> that was perfect timing, by the that way. Sounds good. <laughs> that was perfect timing. I just heard, I just heard, <laughs> I just heard one of the cats right when I said that. But, um, yeah, it was about it was about cats, and it was like I guess um, Santa Claus was like allergic to cats, and something happened to him, and the cats had to save Christmas, and it was so bad because like the CG, like they used actual cats, but when the cats' lips moved, it, they for some reason used human mouths. It oh, was wow. it Kinda was like that, uh, maybe. Yeah, it was really weird. But uh, but that was that, and then New Year's, um, everyone fell asleep except for me. Um, I ended up watching uh, some episodes of Ronin Warriors, which was an old anime I grew up with, and you know I I hadn't watched it in such a long time, and I started watching it, and I realized how well it didn't age. Like the dialogue was just really really bad. Man, I I would recommend uh, actually as far as Christmas movies, if you haven't seen it, maybe for next year, the one with uh, Kurt Russell, the uh, oh yeah, Santa Claus Chronicles. Uh, I I might even mention that last uh, Christmas of, of twenty eighteen because now I watched it and that was actually a really uh, really awesome movie. Like I think it's one that's really worth adding into the collection. And and I think me and my wife we might actually go see that movie Cats that everybody says is just so horrible and that's kind of why we want to go see it like man that just looks like a complete train wreck and i kind of appreciate that my wife's like i kind of want to see that i'm like i I, like okay (laughs) just because it's so bad it's going to be in the movie theater for like a week and it's just a really weird it just looks so weird and uh and and it's the only movie that's actually had like a patch like they had oh, wow. to, yeah. They actually had to redo some of the CGI while it was in theater. So there's two different versions of the movie. There's like a newer version, and there's like the older version where I guess the CG wasn't to par. It's really weird. I've never heard of the movies doing that before. But it's like a, it's almost like a game that came out that needed an update. It's weird. 
Yeah, it is such an odd one, too, because it's just like, I'm like, I don't know who, I mean, I know Cats is very popular, you know, play on Broadway, and it just seems oh, like, yeah. like an odd thing to put onto a movie. I'm like, who, who would want to see, like, this looks horrible, and I like horrible stuff, and it's like, I barely want to see it, and I only want to see it because it looks horrible, and there's a lot of people like me, it's just like a very weird, like, who was that even made for? Ah, you know, I, I don't know, but, yeah. Cats are still pretty cool, though, despite that movie. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, with some of the gaming news, it's it's been kind of um, a little lackluster since the last episode. Nothing too crazy has happened uh, other than this right here. This is, this is some crazy, crazy mess because, you know, the Final Fantasy VII remake is coming out in March. And uh, they had some folks had found some leaks of the demo on PSN. And some folks have figured out how to get the demo on PSN. So some people have already been playing the demo, and it's not officially out. And, of course, you know Square Enix is kind of upset about that because the demo is not ready for folks to play yet. So there are parts of the game that's not done. It's not all the way polished. So, of course, people are already critiquing about, oh, well, this is this is a problem with this. This is a problem with that. I played the demo. And Square Enix is like, yo, you're not supposed to be playing the demo yet. Like, what are you doing? And we've even seen some – I've seen some content creators who have already uploaded Let's Plays and made videos on it. And I'm just like, what are you doing? Because if you're a content creator and you're showing something of Square Enix that Square Enix hasn't even approved yet, congratulations. You just got blacklisted from Square Enix. So – it's it's been kind of crazy about that. Like, what do you think about that, James? Yeah, you're kind of pushing up some. Is it moral issues or whatever? Yeah, you know, like you said, with releasing things like that early. I mean, obviously, we get games that aren't ready to go out even when they get released. Hence, as you mentioned with the movie Cats, you know, patches and such. So I don't see how anybody within their right mind could get something like this ahead of time no one they have it way before anything any beta it, it, it you know no one should have this and something's oh like this is terrible of course because yeah. games barely come complete nowadays uh and you know this is something many people have been waiting for i kind of even hate the idea that it even happened and you know with just technology and things today you know leaks are just bound to happen yeah more uh but it, it, it's just kind of like a bummer just overall like like something like Final Fantasy VII, like I, I don't picture this remake. It's not going to have patches. It's not going to be one of those cases, you know, like a, like a modern game. Like it's it's an older game, completely remaking. And I think it would just be kind of cool just for it to come out and everybody to get it at the same time. For so many people have been pining for this game. Like I said, I'm not really one of them. I will. I'm not going to say 100. percent I won't play it. Um, it's just something I don't know if I'm, I want to go back to, but more than likely, I probably will end up sitting there and playing it. But it, I just kind of wish that's one of those ones that everybody could just get at the same time because I know how many people do want it, and I can at least, uh, even if I'm not one of those, I can appreciate that. You yeah, know? I know what that's like, and this is a game, man. I at twenty something years, mm -hmm. people have have wanted this. It's been rumored. It's coming. We've probably been talking about this for ten years since even before we started the show. Um, and it's just cool. It's cool that it's finally common. I just kind of, you know, so much just kind of like a bad. That's like a bad spoiler thing, and yeah, it, it's just something you know. People just you know they they want some views. They, they know what they're doing. Yeah, and I think they know what they're doing. They know it's not the complete product, and they still want to just put that out there because they got the scoop. You know, and yeah, that's just how it is nowadays. It, it's just like I said. I I saw it, and I was just like, man, that's just to me. It's kind of a slap in the face of Square Enix too. You know, to go out of your way and be like. You know, oh, I got the demo. It's not out yet, but I got my first hands on it, guys, and let me show you what it's all about. It's just like, to me, it would be almost like, you know, watching a movie, getting a bootleg of it, and uploading footage on YouTube. I mean, I, I'm surprised, because uh, I always always say, like, I'm pretty sure these folks are probably blacklisted from Square Enix, but I'm, I'm surprised YouTube themselves haven't been flagging any of this stuff from Square Enix. Like I'm, I'm very surprised there hasn't been any sort of uh, issues like that. But so, so that that happened. Also, um, this a couple of days ago was uh, the the I'm trying to remember the name of it. It's like a computer science convention they had. Um, and as of recording this, uh, last night they've revealed the PlayStation 5 logo. Um, it looks like the PlayStation 4 logo, but the 4 is the 5. That's that's pretty much it. They showed the logo. They said, hey, we're coming out 
uh, with this new console late 2020, you know, right around the time that a new Xbox is coming out. So it's going to be really interesting with E3 right around the corner. It's hard to believe it's only a couple of months away. We're going to have E3 and probably some more news on the new consoles. And as always, there's rumors of a Switch Pro. That uh, a lot of people are talking about. Uh, it's funny. They've been talking about the Switch Pro since the Switch came out. You know, ever since the Switch came out, it's always like, oh, is there going to be more powerful Switch? I don't... I, I It's one of those things, like, I don't really care until it comes out. But supposedly, if it does come out, it's supposed to come out, like, summer 2020. And it's supposed to be more powerful, which I, I think you and I both mentioned before that, you know, with these new consoles, Nintendo's going to have to do something of some sorts to stay in the competition. Even though they will blatantly say we're not competing with PlayStation and Xbox, they still are to some degree with the gaming market. So they have to do something, especially if they want to continue with third-party ports on the Nintendo Switch, because otherwise it's going to be like really, really watered-down ports of Switch games, so... Yeah. So what do you think about yeah, that? Yeah, like you said, <laughs> it, it is all rumor, and it's more just like, when does Nintendo say something? It's bound to be something that happens. Uh, once again, I worry. We, I think we brought up before, you know, how we did have the, the new Nintendo 3DS, uh, which almost just seems like a completely forgotten thing at, at this time, you mm-hmm. know, which we know is just kind of being phased away. I mean, there's still some games coming out for 3DS, but I think the new 3DS is really, uh, you know... I don't know if I would call it a bomb, but I mean, it's something that just seemed kind of unnecessary. And I just, I don't want to have a system to where you got games that only run on one thing. Yeah. Um, you might see some info on like, it has to do, you know, with the, a certain screen and the screen can produce, you know, this, I just, I don't want anybody that's bought any of these other models. And I don't think Nintendo uh, would do that. I'm sure if anything, they probably learned uh, from that experience with the new 3DS, that the fact that they just put out, you know, the new Switch Lite, uh, which actually I just saw somebody trading uh, one in at the at the GameStop I was at. He got a hundred oh, wow. bucks, and I was almost like, man, like I might have given that dude a hundred bucks uh, for that out, and, you know, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> bought him beforehand. I've done that but before. Actually, I think they offered him, <laughs> yeah, yeah, they offered him the same. I think actually cash or credit, he got offered a hundred bucks, but I was just like damn it, it still almost seems kind of low like you could you couldn't have sold that to somebody else he was super happy to get the cash i don't know if he took it from his kid he had a paper bag wrapped around his foot i, I don't know <laughs> it's just but you know you run into these weird people sometimes and i'm sure i've looked weird to some <laughs> myself so i'm not gonna judge uh but but with you know with that newer system coming out being a big holiday thing i'm sure a lot of kids got that I probably had a really cool Christmas, uh, you know, getting the Switch Lite. Um, and you just you just can't have it. It's too confusing nowadays. You can't have a system that can't run certain games. And you can't have too much, like, you know, lag. And, you know, as we can see with the Pro, Xbox One, Xbox One S, X, you know, all the different ones, you can still play all the games. It, like, no problem. Uh, it, but something with the Switch, you know, that we know is already a little bit lower If they go up too much in power, I just, like I said, I don't want to see a situation where certain people that have this system can't play games. And like I said, at the same time, I don't, I don't think Nintendo would do that. They are uh, a little bit smarter than just leaving people in the dust, whereas to, you know, uh, force them to do that. But, you know, like I said, we, you know, we will see. It's still very exciting. What will Nintendo do? We've obviously got, you know, new Xbox on the horizon, new PlayStation, uh, both I'm sure, you know, well, you know, one will definitely be out around Christmas next year. And it's just, you know, like which one? Like I said, I really am thinking of getting one, you know, a little bit more at launch. Uh, but, you know, who knows? And like I said, it will be exciting. E3 will get so much news and, and you know, there'll be so much stuff to talk about, you know, with these uh, systems. So it is that's a pretty exciting thing, at least for 2020. There's lots yeah. of new system stuff on the horizon. Yeah, and, and, you know, there's already so much news with the PlayStation 5 and new Xbox. I mean, half of it I just don't even want to talk about just because it's that, it's that same kind of, like, rumor mill that we have with the Nintendo NX. You know, like, which is more powerful? Is this more powerful? This one has this many teraflops. And then after a while, it becomes, you know, kind of a, a, a pissing game at that point. But I'm going back to the Switch, though. It's like I, I really hope Nintendo doesn't do something where it's like certain games will only play on like the Switch Pro. Because to me, that like you said, that would kind of alienate 
uh, new new people who bought the Switch this Christmas. Like, hey, I bought the Switch, and you find out six months later, be like, oh, well, this Switch isn't going to be able to play those games. Like, like, again, like you said, I don't think Nintendo would do that. I really hope they wouldn't do that. But, I mean, all we can do is just spectate and just watch and see what's going to happen. Um, but that that's pretty much it. I mean, other than uh, the Intellivision Amico is supposed to come out in 2020. We're, we're hearing about that now. Uh, I think it's like 200. Yeah, another new system in 2020. Yeah. <laughs> and apparently it's like 200 bucks, which is insane to think about. Uh, $200. It's going to have, you know, I, I think it's going to be cartridge based. I'm not sure, but it's going to have its own uh, unique market of indie games. Um, you know, like the new Earthworm Gems coming out for it. Uh, the controller, it still kind of concerns me just because the controller is like an Intellivision controller. And I just don't really see how a lot of games would utilize the spin wheel as opposed to a D-pad, to be honest. You know, that that's an odd one for me. It's like, I, I hope people get the product, you know, that they paid for, uh, you know, except it, it, you know, it was a, a Kickstarter one, I, I think. And most of the information, you know, I've heard about it really has been on, like, the completely unnecessary podcast. Is they, yeah. You know, it, it kind of taken to covering a lot of these systems because some have come out as the, you know, the chameleon in one. You know, they covered that a lot. Oh, and yeah. Some people got burned. Uh, and it just seemed yeah, it just so hard to come out with a system. Like, when you've got all the giants that are putting out theirs. It's really, uh, you know, you're pitching it as like this. It's a family, you know. It's like, well, yeah, the Switch could be a family, you know, unit too. Yeah. I, I, I just, I don't really see something like that standing a chance. I mean, maybe it'll have a small niche crowd, but that niche crowd probably will not be enough to, to keep it going. And it's just, it's, it, it, I'm kind of curious. I'm curious to see how that goes. And, you know, maybe some people will know learn from that and like i said i just i hope nobody gets burned from it and they get a product that lasts at least till they get their money's worth out of it which i yeah. don't even know if i see that because it is you know you're better off just you know get, get a pie get a a, a a mini genesis or turbo graphics or something like yeah you're probably better off spending your money on one of those yeah which which the turbo graphics mini's right around the corner too we're getting that in march <laughs> which i'm still awesome. I'm, I'm still trying to, i'm still debating if i want to get the turbo graphics 16 mini or not like i i don't know like all the mini consoles out of all of them that's the one that kind of excites me the most because i never actually owned a turbo graphics 16 i mean even though i have all the turbo graphics 16 on my pie it's just something about it is a very much of a novelty sort of thing like that's a novelty purchase like if i buy that it's because i just wanted to have it sort of thing it's not like oh i gotta get this new console it's more like i don't need this console but i kind of just want it you know no and and you can even get that cool like european version you know mm -hmm. that uh just looks like really odd because you know, i'm more familiar i have a turbo graphics and you know i've seen the pc engine i can't remember what the european one's called uh, uh the, anyway, the core YouTube. graphics yeah, and it even has its own different look. I, I, I like the option. Like, you know, you still get the same games on every one, mm -hmm. uh, you know, which is really cool. But you have this, you know, neat little choice of these different ones. And lots of times, like I said, they are affordable. You know, even if at first, you know, they will drop in price. Uh, I know even a coworker, she got one of the Genesis minis and she had sent me a, a text of a picture of it. Because she forgot she she bought it and like stuck it away for some gifts for her uh, kids. She got it for herself. And she just tucked it away and forgot about it. And I'm like, yeah, I'm like, that's great. It's like, it's got so many games. Like, I'm sure even if she had a Genesis as a kid, I'm like, there's lots of stuff you you don't even know about. Like, Alyssa yeah. Dragoon. And she's like, yeah, it's, it's just like, what is that? I'm like, man, I'm like, there's just games on there. It, you know, like if you look at, like, the price of what these games go for, that it, it's really a great collection. You know, even like a, a European Tetris or something. Like, it it's a crazy you know good collection and it's one and like i said we love these systems uh you know turbo graphics that's one i it's a good chance i can get it you know uh i just like having them it's something easy you know, if you're going on a trip staying somewhere you never know I got some uh you know some of your friends come by with their kids it's something easy to, yeah uh, you know plug into a tv and let them play with uh, and like I said, they, at the end, they end up being pretty affordable uh, and really great deals, you know, for the games you get. And yes, you know, we do have all these games on our pies and such, but it's still just a nice little easy compact thing that you can just, you know, plug in and have some fun with it. Well, it's like even with the pie, like, you know, when 
when I plug in the plot, the, the pie, I still get kind of worried sometimes that someone's going to play the pie and they're going to like hit the wrong button combination and it's going to bring up a menu or they're going to end up like messing up settings or something like that. Yep. So that's what's really good about the mini consoles is like, here, plug it in, play it. And the most important thing that I think is the coolest thing about these mini consoles and what I like about the mini console market is it brings back a lot of older IPs. That, you know, if those older IPs start to get more popular again, we might get sequels, we might get remakes, we might get something more out of those games. I mean, a lot of times these companies have IPs they kind of forget about and they come out and people are like, oh, well, people like uh, Toe Jam and Earl? Oh, oh, okay, well, we'll make another Toe Jam and Earl sort of thing. So, I mean, y you never know. That, and especially with the Trouble Graphics, I mean, hell, we could get a new Bonks game. We could get... Um, you know, some, something more from Konami. We get more Castlevania stuff or whatever, you know? Yeah, that that's one that really could be a test. And, and I would kind of, in a sense, uh, you know, if you are a fan of Turbo Graphics, I would suggest, you know, supporting that because Konami does own that. And this is a good chance that, you know, like you said, we could see either, you know, sequels, just maybe some more, even d digital downloads, you know, more on systems. We did have some on the Wii for a little while. And it's just one, like I said, you know, if you like that system, just, you know, try to support it if you can. If you're thinking about getting it and you're on the fence, you know, maybe go ahead because it really could open a lot of doors. Because, uh, you know, Konami's just sitting on a lot of these franchises that they're not really doing anything with. And, you know, it's really cool to think about, you know, like Legendary. Well, granted, Legendary Axe isn't on there. That's the one uh, omission I thought should have been. But who knows? Maybe they'll put it out on digital format if enough people, you know, buy this. Then people talk about it. You know, they keep an eye on social media. People like, I want some damn Legendary Axe. Hell and, yeah. You know, maybe we'll get like a two-pack, you know, on uh, any of the uh, stores, you know, which would be, you know, really good to see. So I think that'll be a cool one. Like I said, them going with the different designs. You get a lot of Japanese games, different versions, a little bit of crossover on some of the same games. But hey, you know, uh, that's okay. I, I, it's just cool. It's something we've talked about and we're actually finally getting it, you know? Indeed, indeed. And uh, I think I think that's about it with news. Um, now, this episode that we're doing is something kind of interesting because I was talking to James before, the, before we did the show. I was like, you know... We could do, like, our games of 2019. We could do something like that. I was like, but, you know, this is kind of special because, you know, this is a new a new era, 2020. So I was thinking about we could talk about some games from 2009 to 2019. And uh, I, I wrote I, I wrote down five games that pretty much epitomized the, the, the 10 years, that 10 years. And I sat there, and I was going through all these games. I was going through... All these different websites that were talking about, like, top, I mean, they had top 100 games, and I was like, oh my god! And I was going through it, I couldn't believe I forgot how many great games came out in the past, you know, just five years alone. But uh, interesting thing is, Polygon made their top 100. Guess what game was number one? Number one for the past ten years. Uh, Red Dead Redemption Two. Nah, you're you're gonna you're gonna like be like, oh my god, why didn't I think of this? Minecraft. Minecraft was oh. number one, which is one of those things. Like I I know you don't play. I I don't play Minecraft. No. But it made so much sense when I thought about the importance and the impact that Minecraft had with gaming. Because I mean, you think about it, Minecraft really set the bar and like really awoken the indie developing market you know before minecraft i mean we had you know we had some indie games with the xbox live like xbox live arcade and we had you know a lot of important games that came out but minecraft i mean that set the trend for live streaming and let's plays and uh you know some people that never even liked video games started playing because of minecraft i mean uh, and I've taught the people who like had kids who had like autism that you know that was like their their calm moment was playing Minecraft, and they would make all these like, extravagant things. And the imagination that game awoke uh, really, really was just like, wow, that, that makes a lot of sense. It's Minecraft, even though I I try Minecraft, I couldn't get into it. The closest that I got to Minecraft was Dragon Quest Builders. I really like enjoyed that, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess maybe like a Lego game because I've heard that you know kind of uh, equivalent to you know like Legos in a sense in mm -hmm. form. 
which Legos might be the closest one I've played. But that's one I, you know, I didn't think of that. But as you said, when you said it, I'm like, I'm not going to argue with it. And yeah. I think as far as that, you know, having this online presence, I think even opened up more doors, even though they don't seem similar at all. But even games like Fortnite and such, it, you know, brought into, like you said, with these streaming, you know, lots of videos online, it, it, they're all kind of connected to me. And they're all games like I don't play. But they have such a huge presence and such a huge effect on everything else. But it's something that I'm just like, I think of that as like, oh, that's for like the younger kids. But I'm sure there's people my age that play them too. And I, I don't fault you for it. I just it, it, <laughs> haven't really tried either of them. I don't think they're for me, you know? Yeah, it was, it was one of those things I remember when I first started doing YouTube, uh, you know, and, and podcasting and stuff. When Especially YouTube and Minecraft was so big. I remember if I told someone, hey, I, you know, yeah, I make YouTube videos. They'd always be like, oh, so you play Minecraft? And I'm like, no. I mean, that's, that that right there is like why I didn't argue with Polygon's choice. I'm like, yeah, Minecraft was huge. It was, it was so big and uh, crazy. But... I'm going to go ahead and talk about my first game that, uh, when I think about the last 10 years, really sticks out in my mind. And uh, that's going to be Skyrim. Uh, you know, it came out in 2011. Uh, Skyrim, to me, was the game... And it's funny now, because Skyrim is like... You can get it everywhere. And like so, people, so many people have played Skyrim that they wouldn't even think it would be on a countdown. Like, I've talked to some people about Skyrim. They're like, oh, it's not that important. But looking back... That was like the game that at the time everyone wanted a immersive RPG to feel like. You know, it was the game that really pushed Elder Scrolls to the mainstream because Elder Scrolls was popular, but Skyrim really took it to another level. And I remember like playing Skyrim and just so many hours i played all the dlc for the only dlc i didn't play for skyrim was one i was like i think it was like heart fire something like that it was it was a very minecraft kind of element to skyrim they added where you could like build your own house and i'm like ah, i'm not into that but i played the one where you could turn into a werewolf and a vampire i was down with, with that stuff but i i remember our, our friend gabe you know aka axel foley I remember that Christmas we no no it was Thanksgiving because we called it Bethesda Giving uh, because we all went on Xbox Live in a party chat and we just all played Skyrim and talked about what was going on and uh, to this day when I think of Skyrim I think about that that sort of thing and you know playing before going to record an album of Richter's, Richter's Grimm it was it was a really really good game I freaking love Skyrim and I haven't played it since and I probably shouldn't because. I don't know how well the game's aged since playing it, but it's one of those things like you, sometimes it's best not to go back, even with nostalgia. Yeah, I think if I delved into it because I did, I played it a little bit, and like I have it on the VR on the PS4, and I've, I've definitely thought about checking it out on there. You know, I think would give it a different experience. That game to me brings up memories of being in like the house I was living at the past two. I've been in two different houses since then. But I remember something at work was changing. Like I was getting uh, like a new route. I was getting my own route, but it was like a smaller one. And it's like I was counting on maybe losing some hours at work. And I was like, I want to get a game that's going to take up a whole bunch of my time. Like that was what I thought. I said, I'm going to get this. And as <laughs> you know, if you all have listened to this for many years and that we've been doing this, sometimes James doesn't do too good with role playing. And it kind of fits in that. And somehow... Uh, that wasn't really the game that I was counting on to that, that I was not going to spend money on other games. Uh, but it still makes me think <laughs> of, you know, my game room in that house and the, the little love seat that I was sitting on and, you know, uh, playing the Xbox in there. Uh, and, you know, like I said, it's still, still haven't played it a whole lot. I mean, I still respect it. And like I said, I, I really do, I do want to sit down. I have quite a few games on the VR uh, with the PSVR that I want to sit down with. Uh, and I mean, actually, that's something I can kind of, you know, kind of bring up around uh, 2017. That was one of the years where we had a whole bunch of VR games. Yeah. Uh, that kind of really hit. You know, you had a, you know, a, lot, a lot of different VRs, you know, your Oculuses. Uh, but for many of us that, you know, just play consoles, you know, with the PSVR, it's, it's the only one that really has one. Xbox didn't delve into it. And it's one that I, I held off on for a while. Uh, I, I didn't know if I ever would have bought one new. I ended up getting one, you know, from a friend of mine that was selling his. 
And I, I still don't regret getting it. It's something that actually I like. I, I really like. I think it's really awesome. I think it's done well. And it's one that I just like, I don't play enough. Uh, it's not even that much of a pain because it. I, all I really have to do is plug in the headset and my PlayStation because I've only got two HDMI ports in the back of my TV and there's all kinds of things, you know. Uh, so that's the main thing. But uh, like I said, it's always it's been very comfortable, you know, even if you wear glasses. Uh, which I thought was impressive. And, you know, it is the modern um, light gun system. You know, it's yeah. big fans of light gun games, which uh, there's a couple I'm going to talk about too in a little bit as far as light gun games over the decade. But it, if you love light gun games, like VR is the place to go. Uh, I still haven't even played Resident Evil 7. It just seems like it might be like really scary. I'm old. I'm not sure if I can uh, take that right now. <laughs> but you know, there's there's still many options. That the VR games still keep coming out, and uh, honestly, a lot of them aren't on disc. If you are a disc collector, you do want to you know check some of the places like uh, uh, Play Asia, and sometimes you get them from Europe uh, if you want the disc version because so many of them are uh, you know PSN store only. But uh, I mean, there's really a ton of them of almost anything that you think you might want to do in VR from, you know, little stupid roller coaster games, you know, to horror games to, uh, I, I have one that's like a first person, you know, old school, uh, you know, RPG game, you know, like old wizardry thing, but you're playing it in the VR, which is kind of cool. And I mean, you know, that, that was a big jump, you know, people talk about VR for years. Is it still what, uh, you know, I don't. It doesn't really uh, take me to a completely other place. But I think for what it is, it, you know, I can turn my head and there's still shit on the screen behind me. It's actually a lot better than probably I, I, I really thought it would be. And at the end, a lot of the games are fun. And like I said, for me, it's light gun games. And if you like light gun games, that is the you know the thing to go with. And it is a little bit pricier because you do have to get the headset and everything. But you know, a lot of people are selling them. I'd say you know check craigslist you know be careful for creepy people or maybe you can find a friend that has one that just there's probably a lot of people that have it that aren't using it and yeah if you catch them on that right day they're gonna be like yeah you know what I, maybe i'll take a hundred bucks for it all like and ted biasi said i'll say like ted biasi says everything has a price yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so you know, just like I said, look around and you might be able to get one, you know, at a good price. So, so James, what's what's another game that's on your list of uh, gamings of the decade that um, that you you had? Well, I, I will go back, as I mentioned, Light Gun Games, 2009, because I, I was looking at a, a, a list of games. Uh, I told Xander before the show, I thought he had said some of the best games of 2019. And when I look back, I was like, oh, it's... 2009 to 2019 so right before the show i was kind of like digging through lists and lists of so many games i looked at so many uh and i quit up at about 2017 but uh 2009 for light gun games man house of the dead overkill oh uh, yeah we was still in full effect you know we don't think about it as much even now but uh house of the dead overkill you know, as a, a follow up, the last one we had was uh, House of Dead 3. That was on Xbox, uh, the original, which I think Xbox original, I don't even know if it had guns. And you might have had to use just a controller on it, which is not nearly as fun. It was in the arcades, but with the Wii, once again, like, so that brought light gun games back. And it was the perfect fit for House of the Dead. You know, they even released House of the Dead 2 and 3 by themselves, but Overkill, man, like, they really ramped it up. And when you talk about, uh, you know the Wii, and you think of kids. House of the Overkill, House of the Over House of the Dead Overkill was a mature game. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think it has the Guinness World Record for the uh, number of f bombs. I was just about to say that. Yeah, it does. Yeah, very, very foul. Not kid friendly, but man, if you just if you like <laughs> wildness, you know that kind of grindhouse feel, over the top, light guns. I mean. You can't really beat that. But in that same year in 2009, just as a follow-up, because I think it's related, uh, Resident Evil Archives, uh, another uh, – not full, it, mostly light gun. Had a little bit more control to it. But uh, those came out. Dead Space Extraction, which was uh, – if you like Dead Space, you might not have known there was like a standalone Wii game that was uh, pretty much light gun. A little bit more interactivity. 
I think with uh, tools and such. Uh, and then I can't read much. Well, those are that's enough right there. I think as far as, <laughs> as, far as light gun games and such in two thousand and nine. Like I might have another one, but my uh, handwriting's really bad on right there. But uh, like I said, you know, light gun games to here and now. We went from the Wii up to VR, and it's like it's still maintaining that. But I thought that was a really big year. You yeah. Know, as far as some games like that, because I bought every single one of those on the Wii because I was a huge light gun fan, obviously. Yeah, one of one of the games that I added on there was um, Walking Dead from Telltale, um, especially season one. Now I ne- I never got into the other seasons. I got season two and I played like half of it, but by then the Telltale games were getting kind of stale because they, they it, it blossomed. There were so many Telltale games coming out. I still need to play Wolf Among Us. I remember you talking about how good that one was. Still need to play that one, but uh, Walking Dead. Uh, coming from someone who, at the time, did not watch the show, um, I remember that sh- that game really emotionally impacted me uh, because I got so caught up with the characters. I got so caught up with the choose-your-own-adventure mechanic that Telltale had at that time, that point-and-click kind of adventure. And I remember, like, I think it was Chapter 4, because there was, like, five chapters. That that chapter where you got... And I can say it now, because it's it's, the game's been out forever, so I don't care about spoilers. Yeah. But uh, when you get bit, and you have to decide if you're going to tell your you know comrades that you got bit, or if you're going to hide it from them. I remember I paused the game and went outside and went for a smoke, and I sat there and I thought about it. I was like, do I tell them or do I not tell them? Like Either way, I want to turn into a zombie. And it was just like, at that moment, I was like, man, I'm really invested in this game. This game, so to this day, I still say, like, when people talk about Telltale games, I still like gush about Season 1 of Walking Dead. That was such a good game. Oh, my God. Yeah, as much as we love a lot, like I said, I love Wolf Among Us, and like I'd still, you know, recommend playing that. It's it's really hard, uh, you know, to, at the end to compare, you know, like to a lot of the motions and stuff, uh, you know, in the Walking Dead one, like that really carried a lot. You know, I remember you, know, you get the whole thing with the, you know, the the little girl that lost her family, those weird cannibal dudes. Yeah, I remember, you know, the the option to choose to like, you know, well, we need to kill this one chick in your group's dad because he got bit and of course like you know she's not gonna want well, that to happen you remember you remember in the farm you remember that part in the farm where the kids like stuck and you know you gotta decide if you're gonna save him or let the zombies eat him oh yeah uh, you know it's like this kid he, he can't do anything and it's like if you make the decision like the dad like is just pissed off at you for the rest of the game and just tries to do everything to make everything terrible for you like stuff like that is just like oh my god this game it really was an adrenaline rush, and it didn't have that much action playability wise, but just, you know, uh, storytelling. It was just incredible. And it really does, like, with, with emotion, it brings that. And oftentimes, like me, I try to play it. And ex- that's the cool thing with games. You can do what you want. You know, you can be the hero, you can just be a dick. You know, yeah. you, you want to be a Jedi, you want to be a Sith. Like, what do you want to do? I, I kind of play the line and like I normally I end up doing what I like to think I would do in real life. Like that's how I play the game. And like I said, it, it, that's not for everybody. That's just usually what I end up doing. I kind of stick to a slightly more, you know, either realistic or good path. Uh, unless I go through a second playthrough and I want to try just, you know, all the, you know, the mean dick ways to do stuff. But that's how, you know, I try to go through them. And that one really, you know, allowed you to. And, and at the end, you sometimes you kind of end up with the same results at the end of the game. But you can't argue, you know, sometimes the emotion and choices that you have to go through, you know, with, with picking. Like, it really does. Like, it just you got to wonder if somebody just doesn't care at all. They're just like, oh, yeah, I don't think it doesn't matter. Like, I don't know. You might be like a, a psychopath. I'm, I'm not sure. Some of those things, they just get me. You know, they get us and they draw that emotion out, which is, a you know, a sign of a, a really good game. The fact yeah. that, you know, you can sit there, play it, and then we're sitting here still talking about it. Yeah, and then I never did go back and play uh, Walking Dead. Like, I know some people, they went back to play to get the different results and stuff. But, no, it was like I played it, made the decisions the way I wanted to, and I'm like, that's my game. That's the way it ends because of my decisions. So I never went back. So I had to go back and kind of read up a little bit because, I mean, it's been 
it's been over eight years since I've played it. So, cause I think it came out 2012. So I had to go back and kind of refresh my memory a little bit on some of the events, but I just remember it. It was, it was a game that definitely, definitely deserved to be in my little personal countdown. Another game I wanted to mention is uh, Resident Evil 7. And the reason why I'm mentioning Resident Evil 7 is because that game to me was like so revolutionary for the series because, you know, we had Resident Evil 5 and 6, and, you know, it was kind of going in a different direction after 4. I think 4 was very important because at the time, Resident Evil itself was getting kind of stale. 4 kind of brought a new light to it, made it a lot of fun. But then Resident Evil 5 and 6 came out and it became more action. And a lot of people were like, well, we want survival horror. We want we want zombies. We want scary stuff. And Resident Evil 7 came out and it didn't really give what everyone wanted. But when they played it, they realized they got what they wanted, if that makes any sense. Because even though it was first person, it had that horror element, that Resident Evil feeling, but it was new. It wasn't like them trying to reboot it and go off nostalgia, if that makes any sense. Yeah, and I was never... Were you a big fan of Resident Evil 4? I, I liked Resident Evil 4. Yeah, it's like I, I thought it was good. It's one I, I, I never finished... I kind of had the cutoff earlier on like four just never uh, it's one I, and I have it on the Wii. I have it on the PS four, the PS three, like have it on a bunch of systems and I keep meaning to go back to it, but it's one that was almost kind of the cutoff uh, to where I it didn't kind of stick more with the, with the older ones. I didn't really play five didn't play six, you know, love the, uh, like we said, the Chronicles, like the more light gun ones that those took place, you know, during, the you know the ones from my time like one and two uh, followed those storylines um but seven was one and it's also another one i didn't i didn't finish but i but i did play a good chunk of it and i i really like that I just it was different but it did bring back more you know we were used to you know uh many people if you didn't play the original ones when they first came out uh you can play the remakes which i think kind of carry over that a little bit more fear factor to it because a yeah. lot of those games were very nerve wracking as bad as the graphics and play control and everything was man like back then that you know they were really tense and i mean seven really did bring back that feeling and like i said the, yeah i have the vr one i haven't even played it yet because i just i don't know i mean i really think it's going to be like scary and it's like one one day when i'm in the right mood i'm I'm going to try that out. I, I, You know, I will say my brother-in-law has VR. I still need to go to my sister's house and play it. Because they were like, hey, if you... Because I still haven't tried to VR. And he's like, man, you know, I got VR now. Come over to the house and play some VR. And I, I keep on wanting to go over there and I keep forgetting. But one of the games he does have on VR is Resident Evil 7. And he said that it scared the shit out of him. He said he was playing it one night, and it was like he said he had he had almost to play it in like spurts, like he couldn't sit down and play for too long because he said after a while his anxiety started going high. So I'm like, oh shit, man, that's that's pretty intense. I'm like, okay, you know. So um, I definitely want to try it out. Like I think if whenever I do go over there and play VR, I think the first game I do want to play is Resident Evil Seven. Just go baptism yeah. by fire. Well, I, <laughs> you, know? you could do, you know, maybe warm up with uh, you know, a, a nice light gun game or such, you know, just to get the hang of how it feels. Uh, I guess it, it is a little different. Um, I'd, I'd go back to, uh, as we're talking uh, 2010 and I have a big list of craps. So I'm just going to read a couple off uh, 2010. We did have Bayonetta. Oh yeah, uh, you know, which is a, a, still a series. A lot of people love it. It's still going today. You know, it's crossed over to you know many different systems. Uh, you know, it's just a really cool game. I, I think that is held up. Uh, Mafia Two, which I, which I, I, man, I really love that game. Uh, it's one I've I've gone back and played a couple of times, uh, and even last year that was one I sat through. Uh, once again, on the Wii, as I mentioned with the Lycan games, you know, we're still in big Wii form here. Tatsunoku versus uh, Capcom. Oh, yeah. Uh, very interesting, you know, fighting game. A lot of characters, a lot of people hadn't seen, you know, from some different ones. A, a Wii exclusive. And if you just, you know, if you like Street Fighter and, you know, Capcom fighting games, that one's like a great one that you can still get. It's like, as far as I know, it's not outrageously uh, expensive. Uh, the Data East collection. We, we love, you know, 
compilations Mm -hmm. and that was one another we exclusive uh that just you know everything from bad dudes to uh just rolling thunder dating it's about 20 something games now rolling thunder wasn't on that one ah that was on the wasn't that on the namco Namco. okay yeah and it's easy to get them confused as i because i was trying to think of uh i knew you're trying to catch me i'm trying to think of other data east games uh but bad dudes was the only one that popped up a sly spy that one was on there um which was a really cool one and here's here's a couple right here three pretty big ones i think uh, we had yak as a three which uh when it was my choice to get the playstation three over getting another xbox when my original one died was due to yakuza and uh yakuza 3 had come out and i said i'm gonna go with that we also had on the 360 i didn't play till years later but alan wake oh yeah uh, i love some alan very, wake right and then on the same vein as alan wake as I we were, probably talked about it last episode, Deadly Premonition, yeah, uh, first came out on the 360 in 2010, uh, is which is really good. like Alan Wake and Deadly Premonition are two really cool. You know, like I said, if you're into Resident Evil, you're into survival horror. I think both those uh, Alan Wake does play better. Like I will give it that, but uh, Deadly Premonition is just so weird. And uh, we said before you can get it now. It's it's uh, been re released on ps3 i think it's on the psn shop and of course you can also get it on switch and of course it also has a sequel coming out probably this year and well, uh, if you like twin peaks and survival horror it's uh it's probably a game for you well i was also going to say when you mentioned uh yakuza 3 uh one of the games is on my list is yakuza 0 and i was going to mention you know because that was that was my introduction to the series. Uh, you know, when we first started podcasting, you talked very fondly of the Yakuza series. And I remember I was like, man, I need to dive into it, especially the more you talked about it. And I, I started with Zero, and that was just, that was it. I'm like all about RGG Studios. But I was also thinking about when, you know, when we first started the podcast, how niche the Yakuza series was. And I remember at one time you were upset with Sega and you're like, I'm no longer supporting Sega because I want Yakuza 5, damn it. And like, it finally came out. And it's like, it went from, you know, oh, every four years we got a Yakuza game to every four months we get a Yakuza game. You know, it was, it was amazing. It's amazing how much. You, 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 you want a cool timeline thing? Because uh, I noticed this from some games. Uh, and it, when I had said that, I was like, I'm not buying any more Sega games till, till I get Yakuza 5. Uh, so I don't have Yakuza uh, 4 on this list. Somehow I missed that. But in 2013, Alien Colonial Marines came out, uh, which everybody hated. And somewhere along the line in 2013, even though I said I was not going to buy any Sega games, I bought it because it was $5 new. And I figured Sega was losing more money than they were getting by me buying that game it was but like a sympathy 20- buy <laughs> it, it, it was just like it's five bucks but look that was 2013 and in 2015 we got yak as a five yeah so it was like a two a two-year space where i was just anti-sega i, I gave in as you like you said that kind of uh, sympathy they're losing more than they're getting by me buying this game and it was bad i could have done without uh getting that i'm sure everybody could have but it's interesting to see in this timeline like i said just going back over these you know this past decade and looking at all these games uh and seeing that you know it's like there's colonial wins in 2013 and it was my two-year sega uh boycott into 2015 and then like you said now you can't you know go uh, a couple months without a yak as a game like it's almost like even for me it's almost like overdose of Yakuza, yeah. I hate to say it's just been like when I had to fight for it, and I was just like, "This is the last game I'm ever going to play, so I'm not going to beat it." And I keep holding off and holding off, and finally, I beat Yakuza Four. And then you know, I got to wait like three years, and then now it's just like, man, you you just can't take a crap without one coming out. Yeah, you know, now you there, can have which is good. Yeah, now you can have them all on PS4 because you know in February we get the Yakuza HD collection. It's got three, four, and five. I actually got and that pre ordered. Yep. I I, I got I it pre ordered. It's still it's got the driving, it's got the Daytona music, it's got the hunting, it's got the best fishing. 
uh, I'm, I'm still five is still like I think my uh, favorite, and I don't know if it has it, a lot of it has to do with some of the little things like that, but it also has to do with that that internal fight I had to where like I'm never gonna get this game, and then I get it, and then after that they just bombard me with their like this is what you wanted, and they just cover me in Kiryu's and everything, and I'm just drowning in it, and, uh, <laughs> which is great though. But Zero was a lot of new people's introduction mm-hmm. to it. And a lot of people played Zero. They stuck with the series and they've played every game they've put out since then, which I think is awesome, which just goes to show that I was right all along and that it was an awesome game. So Yeah, Zero Zero definitely was on my list because I mean I I freaking love Zero and it was like I, I got I got the bug once I played it and I was just like, Oh my god. It's like I, I get it, I get it. I know why James loves this series so much because you know before then, before Zero, before the the RGG craze, I mean, a lot of people just assumed that the Yakuza series was GTA, but in Japan. I mean, that's really what the marketing was back in the PS2 era and the PS3. Like it, it, it was it was a very niche series. It really was at that time, you know. And it was it was tough. If say if you went on to PS3 and you maybe missed one and two, they some of them have gone up in price, especially two, you know, for a time. And if you've already played PS3, you know, sometimes it's tough to go back, and you don't want to go back to PS2 and play one. And if you did get Yakuza Three, as we've mentioned before, it's got that whole orphanage thing in the beginning, which is just very obtuse if you're coming in for the first time. Which yeah. is why I always recommended Four. Uh, if someone had a PS3 and you want to play Yakuza, I say get four uh you know yeah. you had a good choice of characters and uh, you know that was kind of start but let's like i could see that you know a lot of the games did hold value even yakuza 3 ended up really jumping up for a while too uh you know but at the end it's great people can finally get these like i said five is that one component that's like just no, it's not been playable uh you know since 2015 uh so you know we got five years where you know people either they missed out on it i mean you could get it but it was on ps3 you know the price fluctuated you might not want to spend that on a digital game you probably don't have your ps3 you know hooked up like me i use mine as a blu-ray player downstairs now yeah it's Uh, like uh like with yakuza 5 like the reason why i'm getting that collection is because i still haven't played five and also i want to go back and play three and beat four because i almost finished four but i stopped and started playing something else i gotta go back to it so i was like i'll just go back on ps4 but yakuza 3 in the collection is going to be the uncensored version which is really interesting because our our version of Yakuza 3 on the PS3 had censored areas in it where this one's going to be completely uncensored and uh, Yakuza 5 at one point was a free game on PlayStation Plus. I missed out on it. I still regret it to this day because now if you want to get Yakuza 5 on PS3, the only way to get it is through the PSN store and it's still I think like 30 or 40 bucks. I mean that's a... Yeah, probably 40 bucks. That's an expensive game digitally. To be so old. Yeah, that's something, like I said, I, a lot of people I could see not wanting to spend that. But like I said, to me, it's, you know, I've, I've played that series forever. And, and 5 is really one of the, the standouts, uh, you know, to me, everything from the small things. Like I said, fishing, like it sounds stupid, but the fishing on that game was the best. You know, it's got it's got hunting. you got a good array of characters. There's one guy who, to me, plays completely different than everybody else uh, in the series, is like a baseball player. Uh, you know, so the baseball kind of, you know, affects his style at times. And uh, in, in, in even though uh, 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 Majima, you know, was known to carry a bat, it, to me it was still very uh, different uh, with this character. But that one is just, it, it's really cool. People are, you know, finally going to get to go back and play that. And, um, you know, it, coming up to the end here, I think I'd say also in 2013, uh, just a, a small game that we both love that you can also play now on the Switch, Gunman Clive. Oh, yeah. That came out, you should say, which is real big, you know, you know, 3DS. You can see by a lot of these games. Uh, we also got the Dungeon and Dragons collection in 2013. Well, uh, I was I was about to say, James, because uh, I'm actually making a video of uh, cheap Switch games. Because uh, all the games we'll be making on this video are games that are under ten dollars, on the exception of one that's twelve ninety nine. But at the time that I was making the video, it was on sale for a buck. But you can get the HD collection of Gunman Clive one and two 
for four dollars on the eShop. And I, I will tell everyone who's listening, if you have not played Gunman Clive, get that collection. If you're a big Mega Man fan, if you like Westerners, like you know, like cowboys and all that stuff, and a really unique art style, definitely get that game. I remember when I got my 3DS, that was the first game I got on the eShop because I remember James, you told me you were like, Man, you gotta get Gunman Clive. And I'm like, All right, I'll buy it. And I freaking love it. It's great. You know, I even had one of my friends I, I was trying to convince. He's like, yeah, I just don't really know. And I'm like, dude, I'm like, just, I'm like, get it. I'm like, it's like, I'll give you four bucks if you hate it. Like, like that was on the switch is because he had not played it yet. And I'm like, it's really, I'm like, you will dig it. Uh, and it, it really is. Like you said, the art style, uh, just really, uh, it's just, it's, it's something different to it, you know? And, and the music and everything does have a Mega Man feel. Mm-hmm. It is tough. Uh, but it, it's also, you know, very fun and you really want to uh, go back and keep playing it. Like I said, just weird to see that, you know, tw- 2013. Another big title, though, for the 3DS, Luigi's uh, Mansion. That also came out that same year. Yeah. Um, Lego, Lego City Undercover, uh, which I'm a, I'm a big fan of those games. Uh, that series, you know, also is still going, which that was the first one that came out was on the 3DS, uh, you know, before the bigger one it, came out on the wii u i think initially uh and like a wolf among us hit that year and uh you know i was saying too you know dungeon and dragons uh that arcade collection was one that had really you know eluded us for a long time i mean sure you could get it on roms but there was never you know a, you know a, a way to get it on the console and play it yeah and, the only the only way yeah. the only way back then was uh, a saturn import which was yeah. really expensive yeah definitely one of the more expensive ones and this one you could get you know everything there finally and you know we started seeing some more games come out like that guardian heroes Mm -hmm. um definitely had a few more uh you know kind of saturn era games that came out around that time as you can see you know on psn you know ps3 was still going and a a lot of those and you could you know had online play achievements and, and they're still great games, you know. If you love like a beat 'em up, especially the Capcom ones, definitely had a little bit more RPG element to it. If you uh, love King of Dragons, Knights of the Round, and you never played Dungeons and Dragons, like that's one that's definitely out there, definitely fun to get. And uh, I also jump up too into 2014 real quick. Uh, the PS Vita was kind of uh, going around then, which is kind of a forgotten system too. But uh, two games on that one, I'd say I've really loved was a uh, Nidbog, which is a very uh just kind of interesting almost semi like fencing game uh is uh it, it, just the backgrounds it was very simplistic graphics but just very fun ali ali very cool skateboarding game oh yeah it's that's a, a fun sequel. game and it's available on it i think everything now mm-hmm. too uh, alien isolation Speaking of Colonial Marines, which was terrible, I, Alien Isolation came out in 2014, and uh, so another you can now, big one too. I was say you can get Alien Isolation now on the Switch for 30 bucks. Right, all the DLC, uh, you know, everything with it, and it's that one's a very you know scary game. That would have been a really cool one uh, to have on VR, I think. Oh yeah, definitely. And uh, NES Remix. Uh, you know, that was just a, a really fun series. We had some on the 3DS. Uh, we had some on... the hell was that on? That was on the Wii U, right? Yeah, the Wii U and 3DS, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so the NES Remix was just awesome. And I'd love to see another one of those nowadays on Switch where, you know, it took snippets of old games, gave you challenges, you know, added things to it. Um, it might have been... Re- I think it's been re-released... Not positive on that. It's a shame if it hasn't, but uh, hopefully if it hasn't been, then we still will, you know, at least get like a new one. I'd love to see a, a Super NES remix. Uh, I think that, like that, it would almost have to happen with as popular as those were, uh, and just a really fun series of games. You know that uh, if you love the old school NES games and you just want something a little bit different, like I said with the challenges, that's one that definitely check out. Yeah, it's it's really awesome. Now, because uh, we're about to wrap up the show uh, and get into games we've been playing recently. But before that, uh, James, was there anything, like any last thing you wanted to say about the gamings of the decade? I mean, uh, I would throw a shout-out to Tomb Raider. 
because I think the Tomb Raider games they did, uh, the, the three of them, you know, just the Tomb Raider, the Rise of Tomb Raider, and the third one. Don't remember what the name of it was. But, uh, you know, Tomb Raider was a series I was never a fan of until I played these. And, you know, they really, uh, you know, Laura Croft is just symbolic with video games. You know, one of the most popular characters, uh, you know, I would think. You know, she said movies, everything, countless games. But, man, these remakes they did, uh, you know, starting on the PS3, uh, where I, I thought were just amazing. Um, you know, Uncharted was a really big series. And I think Tomb Raider took a little bit from Uncharted. But, I, like, I really loved it more than that. And I thought they were all you know, just amazing games that they finally felt what Tomb Raider like should have played like the whole time that like, I just didn't get it. And like, it wasn't capable of doing that back then. Uh, and I just, I, I was never a fan, but those games just really grabbed me. I, honestly, I love playing all three of them. And they're ones like I would, I, I like to think I'd go back, you know, and play them again. Cause it, it was uh, the second one. I think actually I sat for like, 12 to 13 hours playing that game straight and that doesn't happen a lot with me like it, it just yeah. it, that rarely i mean i've done i have a lot of you know i've logged in a hundred something hours on yakuza of uh, five and you know i did play it for long stretches but i it was very rare for me to sit and actually play a game for half a day um and i just i i thought those were you know amazing as far as uh you know coming from an older decade itself into a remake and what they did with it. And it just kind of became what it always should have done. Um, and and re- oh, I'll give this shout out to you for a wrestling game. I have to do that. I think it was cool to get a new Fire Pro uh, this past year. And uh, I'm just, I'm really looking forward to more wrestling games. We've kind of seen the WWE 2K series crap out. Uh, it's this last game has just been, you know, completely bug riddled. It's just been awful and garbage. And I hope this signifies a change. I hope we see new games from WWE. Uh, you know, we got Retromania on the horizon, which, you know, looks awesome if you're a fan of the old uh, WWF superstars and WrestleFest. Uh, they look really good. I still think AEW is going to have an AKI game. My fingers are crossed. But, uh, you know, just to see Fire Pro on, uh, you know, with a little bit of updated graphics, it still plays the same. And, uh you know, that one, I don't know, the, that Fire Pro probably has to go down as, like, the best uh, wrestling game of the uh, the, the past decade. Uh, but and that's about it. I mean, this it's been amazing. Like I said, I would recommend to anybody just take a look at a list of games from the past decade. You, you kind of be surprised at uh, so many of these. Some you may have missed. Some you may have played and forgotten about. But, I mean, there is just a ton of uh, good stuff. And I guess really what we got to look forward to is just more good games in the next decade going on indeed indeed and uh yeah the last, the last game i want to mention uh, before i get into games i've been playing is uh of course the last of us i will mention that game mainly because you know now when i look at the last of us i'm like oh you know it, it is a little overrated it is a little uh, like a little people kind of give it a little too much uh praise uh but at the time when i played it i loved it when you were talking about playing games for a long period of time i remember that was one game that i played until the sun came up I remember uh, I it was late one night. I started playing probably around like 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. When I stopped, it was like 6.30. And I remember stepping outside for a smoke and seeing the sunrise. And I'm like, holy crap, I haven't done this in forever. But uh, so, so, yeah, big shout out to The Last of Us on that. Now, get into games we've been playing. Um, my list is going to be very short because I've just been playing one game, one game only. And it's a game that uh, James actually got and gave to me for my birthday slash Christmas, and that is Judgment. Uh, if you guys remember the last episode, we were talking about uh, Judgment, and I was like, oh, that, I that still haven't had a chance to play that. And, uh, yeah, James, you sent it to me, and oh, my gosh, man. I'm, like, on Chapter 7. I'm, like, 18 hours into it. Like, every time I get a chance to play a game, that's what I jump to. And it's it's awesome. It's great. I'm planning on reviewing it. Uh, cause I mean, even though that game's been out for a while now, it's been one of those games like, you know what? I want to make a video about it. I want to talk about it and talk about everything that I love and, and everything about that game. It's been so much fun. I think it was something a little different with RGG studios with the investigation elements like, uh, you know, uh, going in first person view and looking at your surroundings and chasing people down, flying drones through the look through the windows and stuff like that. I thought that was really, really cool. 
Uh, but man, it's it's freaking good. It's so good. And the drone yeah. and the like drone said, racing. Oh my god. Yeah, it's fun. Like I said, they manage uh, a lot of the times. The Yak series has managed to take you know things like I did not. I told you, I was like, I didn't want to do the drone racing at first. I was like I just don't want to do this. I don't think I'm gonna like it. And eventually, picking enough parts, like you have to do. You know, maybe one for a side mission. See if you want to do it. And I'm like, man, like this isn't. Like this is pretty good. They managed to take things and like nothing ever completely sucks in their games. They managed to do almost everything uh, very well. And it's like if you like Yakuza and you want something you know a little different. If you were a fan of uh, L.A. Noir from 2011, then uh, <laughs> you know it has a, a little bit more investigation and things like that in it, where it changes up. And as I told you, I think it's one of uh, possibly other than just basic Kiryu fighting. Um, it has one of my favorite fighting systems. I agree. Uh, so far, uh, it's just something about it, man. I like it. You've got the one that's a little bit more defensive, and you got the one that's a little bit more offensive. You got two styles. It's definitely more, you know, Chinese based. Uh, but it just, man, it it works, and it's one like I said out of. And this coming from me, you know, this played, you know, a butt ton of Yakuza games. I just, I really loved that fighting style. And I mean, I think it's uh, because it's a good one. You might have a little bit of yak as a burnout and that's OK. Take a break if you need to. Uh, but if you go back, maybe check this one out, because like I said, it does have some different things to it. And even the tailing missions, things that normally would irritate me in most games, they still manage to, uh, you know, pull it off to where I never get fully frustrated with and it still manages to be fun. Yeah, and and you know we were mentioning the drone racing. Uh, a little a little tidbit on that. As I was playing it, I'm like, man, this feels very much like F Zero uh, G. I believe it was GX or whatever. It was on the GameCube, and I knew that game was published by by Sega. So I went and did some research, and yeah, the RGG Studios. Uh, before it was RGG Studios, the 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 guy behind the Yakuza series. Before that, he was working on Monkey Ball, and he worked on F-Zero for the GameCube. So that makes sense. I'm like, all right, this is why the drone racing feels so much like F-Zero's, because it pretty much is (laughs) F-Zero. That's awesome. But not as hard. Yeah. Because the GameCube was very hard. It's it's not as hard as that. (laughs) (laughs) It's good. It's fun. But, uh, James, what have you been playing? I, I I played Radar Mission on the Game Boy. That was about <laughs> 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 when I put I pulled out a stack of some Game Boy games uh, I was going to get around to, and I uh, ended up. Uh, I, lately, I've been really wanting to play Battleship. Like, I almost bought one of the old. Uh, I have one in the attic at my mom's. Like one of the old school ones from the eighties. Not the electronic, it's just the regular one. Uh, but I was just really wanting to play Battleship, and then I, I realized I was like, oh, I have a version. So yeah, Radar Mission on the original Game Boy. Uh, is a battleship game and uh yeah i mean it's battleship you know you you select where you want to put your boats you get the classic lineup and uh if, if the mission goes long enough past like 10 turns uh in the battleship is still functional you can uh send off a plane and the plane on one hit is terrible because it's one hit and you never know where that stupid plane is uh so it's hard it's hard to win but it also can save your ass because if you also launch one of the planes it's just out there on the board with this stupid little one hit plane but uh it's one i had as a kid uh when i had a game boy i had a stack of maybe like four or five games you know i, I didn't have the most uh and that was one i did have and i remember logging in a lot of hours playing that so that was really fun uh going back and uh, other than that, I've been watching a lot of uh, Homicide on the uh, Life on the Streets, uh, which is an old '90s show. Uh, it's kind of like if you like Law and Order uh, without all the courtroom stuff, it's really good. It's also based on the same uh, book that the show The Wire is based on, which uh, I've watched a little bit of, and it's also very good and it's a very popular show. But uh, just if you like a, a gritty crime cop show that actually has a lot of humor in it like i, I really end up laughing a lot uh so that's been great uh, that was my christmas gift uh, i got from my my wife and i was the uh, whole series of that so really been watching a lot of that with her and then like i said i played radar mission and um that's about it i did though by death stranding um it kind of upon ryan's recommendation because he got it for christmas and i was curious about it he told me he was digging it 
and I had a coupon at GameStop for like 15 bucks off uh, a used game. And so I ended up getting it. And it, was, it was about 40 bucks or like 38 and some change after tax. Uh, but I've, I, I haven't played the most games lately. I've kind of had trouble getting into it, it, some games. So I was like, this seems like a weird obtuse game with maybe not, not a whole lot of fighting. And, yeah. you know, that I'm just, I, you know, you hear things about it. People are very divisive. I kind of want to check it out for myself. Like I said, I've been curious. And with Ryan's recommendation, she said he, he's enjoying it. He's like, I, I think you'll like it, man. So I went with it. So I'm definitely going to check that out over the next day or so. And hopefully next episode I will uh, talk about that a little bit and see what I think. Yeah, I kind of I kind of hate the fact that I missed my chance with uh, Death Stranding because, yeah, it was one of those games I remember we talked about in, uh, I think, like, I don't know if it was the last episode or a Halloween episode we had, Ryan, but I remember we were talking, all three of us were talking about Death Stranding. And, you know, that's back when it came out, and it was like, oh, it's a walking simulator and, and stuff. And I was just kind of like, I don't feel like playing that. But I started listening to another podcast. I actually listened to Acts of the Blood God. It's a uh, podcast from U.S. Gamer. It's on Spotify. And um, it's like these two girls, and they talk about RPGs and stuff. And they had one, one, one of the hosts they had was from... Uh, another gaming journalist site, and they all talk about Death Stranding, and the more they talked about it, the more I was like, hmm, this sounds a little bit more interesting than I thought. And then Ryan got it, and Ryan was like, man, it's actually not too bad. And then I found out Redbox, you know, because Redbox is no longer selling or letting you rent video games uh, after, I think... No, they stopped? Yeah, yeah, they, uh, 2020, they, they, they pulled the plug on it. So they were liquidating a lot of their games, and they had Death Stranding for twenty five bucks. And I was gonna buy it. I was I was gonna buy that, and I was also gonna buy uh, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, which I got Fallen Order, and really good game. I need to go back. I'm getting back to that game once I finish yeah. uh, Judgment. But um, I kind of hate that I missed out on it because now you know I can't buy it, and all the places are sold out. At all the red boxes are anyway, so I, I'll get I'll get to it eventually. Um, like I said, I feel like it's one of those games that I feel like you need to play in order to have an actual opinion on it. Because I feel like it's this one is really polarizing, crazy video games, Death Stranding. Yeah, very divisive. Like I said, people you know some hate it, you know some say it's good. I'm I, I'm going on the view of my of my friend, and we have some similar taste. And and sometimes you know I don't like the. Uh, well, I do like, you know, the walking sims. I, I, there's some I don't, and I would bring up, too, Firewatch from 2016, which I, I absolutely love. Loved Firewatch so much. So, it, you know, even if it's something similar to kind of that, where it, where it is some walking around, but at least you have some interactions. It's yeah. not just walking. Um, it, it, you know, that's, that's all I can really do is play it. Like I said, hopefully the next day or so, uh, I'm off Thursday, so I'm definitely going to check it out. And I'll definitely let you know you know, how it is to see if it's something you might want to check out. Cause you know, in time it's only going to go down in price anyway. Exactly. But, uh, speaking of checking out, uh, be sure guys, if you're listening to us on, um, if you're listening to this on YouTube or Spotify, iTunes, you can pretty much catch excess gaming podcasts on pretty much any podcast platform. Now, uh, be sure to leave us a rating, leave us a review. It helps the show get more uh, views. It helps people find it quicker. I mean, if it gets a good review, then like say on iTunes, it's going to be easier for folks to find it. We'll get more listeners and grow as a podcast. But uh, other than that, I mean, I'm excited for 2020. I'm excited about what new endeavors the podcast has and uh, what new topics we have. I mean, how many guests we're going to have. I mean, I'm hoping we have more guests this year than we have. I mean, it's always hard with scheduling. It is what it is. But We'll have Ryan at least a couple yeah, of times. Yeah, we'll have Ryan back for sure. <laughs> but anyway, guys, I want to thank you for checking out another episode of Excess Gaming Podcast. I hope you guys have a wonderful night. And as always, happy gaming. Hope you all have a good new year and uh, holidays and uh, February and all that, man. Have a pleasant evening, everybody.